Hey, what is up, mortals? It is Sunset here with a new video for you. Welcome to Season 1, Part 4 of What If Deku Was a Windmaster? I just wanted to greet you guys by just saying, sit back and relax. You're in for a treat. So we begin. The next day, 1A had their first full day of classes. Every morning was dedicated to academics. The students' minds were pushed to their limits. It seemed that UA went plus ultra in everything. Even though the group was mentally wiped from the first part of the day, they were all physically pumped for what came next. Hero training. This was the reason they had come to UA. This is where they would learn the skills they needed to protect the world as heroes. All of the students sat at their desks eagerly, awaiting the start of the class. The door to the room slid open, and All Might, dressed in his Silver Age costume, entered the room in a dramatic pose. I am here! Coming into the room like a hero! All the students were amazed to see the number one hero was indeed teaching at UA. Izuku was so overjoyed that his smile nearly ruptured his face. Oh gosh, it's true! All Might is a UA teacher! This is so amazing! Bakugo, who was seated in front of the green teen, turned around and hit his overexcited friend hard in the head. Ow! What was that for, Kachan? Control yourself, Kage! We're training to be heroes! All Might cleared his throat, and the whole class looked at him. The tall man held up a card with the word battle, written in bold red letters. Today in class, we begin your hero training! We will start with combat training. I hope you're excited! Bakugo then exploded with glee. His eyes blazed with a victorious fire at the thought of getting to fight people. In response to this outburst, Izuku punched the spiky-headed kid in the back of the head. Damn it, Kage! Who do you think you are busting me in the back of the head? Just returning the favor, Kachan! The two glared at each other for several seconds. Bakugo had a menace in his eyes, while Izuku's orbs beamed with glee. The whole class was engrossed in this display, until All Might called for order. Now... A big part of being a hero is looking the part. The number one hero pressed a button on the lectern, and several shelves emerged from the wall. On each shelf was a briefcase with a large number on it. These are your hero costumes. They have been designed using the information about your quirks and the designs you submitted with your student registration paperwork. Get changed and meet me on Ground Beta. After the class got changed, they met on ground beta as instructed. They all emerged onto the scene in their shiny new costumes. Izuku's was a simple outfit. It consisted of a white muscle shirt and loose-fitting pants. Both had green stripes down the sides. The back of the costume had the kanji for tornado on it in red characters. Both Kendo and Mina were checking out Midoriya's costume but they also noticed that he was way more jacked than they first thought. The pink bubbly girl ran up to the wind user. Midoriya, your costume looks great on you. Thanks, Mina. Yours is great too. Very bright and colorful. It suits your personality. Oh, you're so nice. Did you hear that, Kendo? Midoriya liked my costume. This display of enthusiasm confused the honest teen. All he did was tell the truth. There was no need for such a display. Izuku figured this was just Mina being Mina. Yours looks really good too, Kendo. It looks like it would give you a great range of motion. That would work great with your sword power. The orange-haired girl smiled at the greenette. That's why I designed it this way. You all look super cool, like real heroes. Now, let's get started. All Might explained that the exercise would have the students pairing up and facing off against each other. One team would play the villains while the other would be the heroes. The villains would be in possession of a bomb. It was the hero's job to find and secure the villains, 
then take control of the bomb. The villains would win if they captured the heroes, or time expired. Sounds like the heroes are working at a disadvantage. That is a normal state of affairs for a hero. You will all have to get used to working with these constraints. All Might then had the teens pick numbers from a hat. The individuals with matching numbers would be partners. Midoriya was paired with Kendo. The green teen was very excited. He thought to himself, I have to make a good impression on her. Meanwhile, Bakugo was paired with Ida. The burly hero then placed two vases in front of himself. He pulled two numbered balls from the containers to decide who would play the heroes and who would play the villains. The first match pitted Izuku and Kendo as the heroes against Bakugo and Ida, the villains. The villain team was given time to find a hiding place for their mock explosive and prepare for the exercise. The hero team awaited the start of the exercise outside the building. So, Midoriya, you're friends with Bakugo, right? Any idea how we should approach this match? Knowing Kachan, he will not wait for us to find him. He'll seek us out as soon as the battle starts. He sounds like a very, um, direct person. The way the girl said direct made it seem like she meant something else. You're not wrong about that, but he is really strong. We should not take him lightly. It would probably be best if I took him on while you located Ida. Hmm, it would probably be more efficient to face him two-on-one. But since we haven't fought together before, that could swing the fight in Bakugo's favor. Or he could just run the clock out. Probably best to stick with your plan. Great! I can handle Bakugo. I'll disable him as fast as possible. I'll then join up with you afterward. We will then double-team Ida. Sounds good. The two smiled at each other. Both were eager to put their plan into action. All Might came over the earpiece radios he had given to each student. He spoke in an enthusiastic voice. All right! It's time for the exercise to begin! <laughs> Good luck! Before we get back to the video, I'd like to talk about our new channel, Celestia, our channel dedicated to all things Dungeons & Dragons. Currently, we have a series breaking down the different spells in D&D, and soon we'll be starting some new series as well. So, if you're a fan of D&D or have an interest in learning about it, check it out! Additionally, if there's something you've always wanted to see get made into a video, head over there and leave a comment mentioning it. The two hero students entered the building through an open window. They creeped through the hallways as quietly as possible. Before long, Izuku's prediction about Bakugo came true. He was waiting in the hallway on the fifth floor. The two nodded silently to each other. Kendo creeped back down the hallway to find another way up. Izuku prepared to face his friend. I knew you wouldn't wait for us to find you, Kachan! Waiting's just not my style. Where's your partner? She's not your concern right now. You have to get through me first. <laughs> That's the way I wanted it anyway. Bakugo charged forward, fury in his eyes. Izuku summed his winds and lifted off the ground. The two teens approached each other at blinding speed. Bakugo went for a massive hit with his right hand. The wind user blocked the strike and attacked back with a gale palm to Bakugo's chest. This sent the explosive teen flying backwards and slamming into a wall. The surprised teen then fell to his knees from the shock of the hit. Bakugo took a moment to catch his breath. His breezy friend's strike had knocked the air out of his lungs. <sighs> I'd heard you to fill up the new attack. So that's it. Not bad. Less powerful than your tornado fist, but more controlled. <laughs> this should be fun. Bakugo used his explosions to increase his speed and charged his opponent again. In a nearby control room, All Might and the rest of the class watched the combat between Midoriya and Bakugo unfold on a massive computer screen. The device displayed multiple camera feeds from the battlefield. They were all impressed by the fighting skills of the two. Mina was the first to respond to the awe-inducing fight. Man! I thought that Bakugo was just a creep. 
Who knew he was that good? The azure eyes of Todoroki flashed with understanding. He doesn't look it, but he's incredibly intelligent. The analytical Yao Yorozu nodded in agreement. Indeed. To move around like that using explosions would take an incredible amount of calculation. And he's doing so while being attacked. However, it would seem that Midoriya's ability to fly is more natural. He's able to do so without thought. He has the advantage in mobility. I guess you two have a point. It'll be interesting to see who wins. All good points, children, but you have missed the obvious. The class looked confused by the statement from the number one hero. Finally, Mina gave voice to this feeling. What are you talking about, sir? What I mean, young Ashido, is that this is a team exercise. You all were so taken in by the fight that you missed the fact that young Kendo is nowhere to be seen. He's right. Where is she? All Might pointed to a nearby camera shot that showed Kendo gently opening a door and peering into a room. The camera showed Ida practicing his villain persona. It was comically overdone. All Might thought to himself, Quite an interesting tactic. Midoriya handles the headstrong attacker while Kendo pursues the bomb and its defender. While conventional wisdom would dictate that heroes remain together, this plan can work. It's obvious that Midoriya and Bakugo have a friendly rivalry. The boy probably figured he could deal with Bakugo while his partner found the bomb. Let's see if he can bring it home. Back on the battlefield, the blonde and greenette had ramped up the onslaught. The boys unleashed a fury of assaults against the other. The walls and floors of the hallway were getting wrecked from explosions and wind bursts. Izuku knew he needed to end this fight quickly. The big problem was that the tight quarters of the hallway were a bad place to unleash his tornado fist. The power of that attack could seriously damage the building and put others in danger. Plus, Bakugo was well acquainted with his finishing move. He would not let the wind user have enough time to perform it. All of this went through the green-eyed boy's mind as he fought. The fight continued. Bakugo used his explosion to get in behind Izuku and deliver an explosion to the back. The breeze user saw it coming and flew out of the way before it landed. Bakugo got an angry look on his face. You aren't going to win this fight by dodging, Kage. Too bad you can't use your best move. This hallway is a terrible place for you. Izuku knew his spiky-headed rival was right. He was going to have to get creative if we were going to pull out a win. Suddenly, an idea came to him. A huge smile came across the boy's face. Bakugo knew this look. <laughs> you just got an idea, didn't you? Well, bring it on! The two boys charged at each other again. Even though the two were closely matched in speed, Izuku had the better mobility. The teen had realized this during their exchange. He decided to put it to use now. As the two closed in, Midoriya used his flight to change direction in an instant. He got behind his opponent and wrapped him in a bear-tight hug. This locked Bakugo's arms in place and meant he could not use his explosion without hurting himself. The explosive teen struggled to get free, but Kage's grip was too solid. Bakugo smiled. Well, you blocked my explosion. The only problem is now you're frozen in place. The minute I let you go, I'll attack you again. Izuku smiled back, but said nothing. He went straight into his attack. The windy boy lifted the two into the air and flew toward a nearby wall at high speed. He then began to spin the two around as he flew. Take this, Kachan! Spiral suplex! The two boys plowed through the wall. Izuku then slammed Bakugo into the floor with all of his might. He then finished with a flurry of punches across his foe's body. The green teen screamed as he attacked. Impact zone! Bakugo laid unconscious on the ground. The green team moved quickly to wrap Bakugo in the capture tape that All Might had given him at the start of the exercise. He knew his explosive friend would not be out for long. As the boy worked, 
All Might came over the radio. The match is over! The hero team wins! The exercise is over? What happened? Izuku pressed his earpiece and called his teammate. Kendo, are you alright? The spirited girl answered back. I'm fine, Midoriya. Sorry I left you out. I saw an opportunity to end the exercise, so I took it. Really? Yes. I hope you're not mad. Not at all. I'd like to know what you did to take out Ida. All Might broke in at that moment. We can cover that when you both return to the control room. Hurry up, please. Izuku looked down at his unconscious rival. He gave Bakugo a hard slap across the face to wake him up. The bomb brain proceeded to throw a fit for several minutes at having been defeated. He declared he would be victorious next time. The victorious Izuku only untied his friend after he calmed down. A short while later, Izuku, Kendo, Bakugo, and Ida all stood before All Might. The spiky blonde stood there with a massive red handprint on his face. Several of his classmates broke out in giggles at the sight. All Might played back the video of the exercise. It revealed that Kendo had been watching Ida perform his villainous persona. He was so into his performance that he didn't notice the girl peering into the room. Kendo summoned her energy sword. The blade of the sword extended into the room and hit Ida in the back. The boy fell to the ground in pain. Kendo then busted into the room and hit the engine youth a few more times, and the boy passed out on the floor. She tied up his legs and arms. Kendo then walked across the room and placed her hand on the bomb. Who was the MVP of this match? Momo raised her hand. Sir, the MVP of this match was Itsuka Kendo. Let me explain. Midoriya and Bakugo both showed they are great fighters. However, the reckless way they conducted themselves could have placed their teammates in danger. If the bomb had been real, their fight could have damaged or even set off the device. Ida did well in preparing his area to resist the heroes, but it was because he got distracted that Kendo was able to take possession of the bomb. Kendo acted with the proper stealth and tact that the exercise called for. She disabled her opponent with doing no damage to the bomb or the surrounding property. That is why she's the MVP of this exercise. All Might kept a cool face, but he thought to himself, Damn, this girl has quite an eye on her. A very good dissection of the events, Miss Yoyorozu. All of you, keep this in mind as we move forward. The other teams each took their turns. The one that stood out the most was the Todoroki and Shoji match. The azure eyed team finished his fight in under a minute, while his multi-armed teammates stood outside. Izuku and Bakugo both looked at each other with grave concern. They had known, in the backs of their minds, that the students of UA would be on another level. However, Todoroki was insane. The two friends knew they were going to have to up their game. All Might gathered the students by the front gate of Ground Beta. He thanked them all for their hard work. He was impressed that no one was seriously hurt during the exercise. He then ran off saying he had somewhere to be. Many of the students were awed by the large man's speed. The students all got changed back into their school uniforms and talked for a while before heading out. Kendo and Mina asked if Izuku and Bakugo wanted to walk to the train together. Ida and Yuraraka met up with them and asked to join them. The group agreed, and all of them left as a group. So much had happened today, but more was to come. In the dark shadow of the hero society, a sinister force was preparing to make its move. Thank you all for indulging yourselves in all this information thus far. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, there are a few more things that I'd like to go over before the video ends. If you're in the mood for some great storytelling, We the Celestials have you covered. Our We the Celestials My Hero Academia and Naruto What If channels retell the story of their namesake anime with a twist. Check it out if you're interested. Now, on behalf of We the Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in today's excellent content production. Their details can be found in the description below. Lastly, if you're interested in what we do here at We the Celestials, I'd like to extend an invitation to join the team. 
The only caveat is that we only accept members from 16 years old to join our crew. You can sign up for whichever category fulfills your interest by joining the recruitment discord using the link in the description below. We're always looking for members to join us. Well, that's it from us for today's video. So thank you all for watching and have a great day.